I'm Mark Matsumoto and welcome to my Tokyo kitchen. Today I want to show you a Japanese eggplant recipe called Mapo Nasu. It's a spicy variation on Mapo Tofu, so stick around! Although it's considered Chinese cuisine in Japan, Mapo Nasu is a mashup of Japanese style Mapo Tofu and a Chinese braised eggplant dish called Yusheng Chesu. With creamy hunks of eggplant in a savory and spicy miso based sauce, it's the kind of dish that Japanese people love to serve over a bowl of rice. Sounds good, right? Let's start with a look at our ingredients. For the sauce, I've got 3 quarters of a cup of dashi. I'll tell you more about this later. I've also got 2 tablespoons of oyster sauce, 1 tablespoon of mirin, 1 tablespoon of hacho miso, and 2 teaspoons of potato starch. For the stir fry, I'm using 1 tablespoon of vegetable oil, 10 grams of garlic, 5 grams of ginger, 40 grams of scallion stem, and 140 grams of ground pork. For the eggplant, I'm using 450 grams of Japanese eggplant and a bottle of vegetable oil to flash fry it. To finish this off, I'm using 1 tablespoon of rayu or Japanese chili oil and some scallion greens for garnish. The first thing I'm going to do is add the potato starch, miso, mirin, oyster sauce, and dashi to a bowl. And then I'm going to mix this together. Hacho miso is very firm, so use a spatula to break it up and then press on the smaller clumps to mash them up. This aged miso has a rich earthy flavor that's perfect for this dish. But if you can't find it, any dark miso will work. For the garlic, I've peeled this already and I'm going to grate it up. You can also just mince the aromatics, but I prefer grating them because it helps distribute the flavors more evenly into the sauce. For the ginger, I've peeled this with a spoon and I'm going to grate it into the same bowl as the garlic. In case you're wondering, you can pick up this spoon-shaped grater in my kitchen tool shop and there's a link in the video description below. For the scallion stem, I'm going to cut a slit down the center and remove the solid core. Then I'm going to flatten out the layers of scallion into sheets and then slice these into thin strips. Next, I'm going to slice the core up into flat sheets and then chop these into strips as well. Then we can gather all these threads of scallion up and mince them up. By the way, I'm using a very large scallion that's sometimes called a Tokyo Negi but this will work with regular scallions as well. You'll just need to use a few more of them. For the garnish, I'm going to chop up some scallion greens. These are very thin scallions called banno negi, but if you used regular scallions in the previous step, you can just chop up the leftover greens. This is a good time to add an inch of oil to a pot with high sides and heat it to 360 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius. For the eggplant, I've washed and dried these off with paper towels and I'm going to start by trimming off the tops. Then I'm going to cut these into an oblique cut by cutting off pieces at a 45 degree angle and rotating the eggplant a quarter turn before cutting another piece at the same angle. This is called nangiri in Japanese and it's a very useful cut to learn because it allows you to cut oblong veggies into pieces that are roughly the same thickness so they cook through evenly. Finally, I'm going to set a wire rack over a tray to drain the eggplant. Okay, our oil is preheated so let's add our first batch of eggplant. Be careful not to overcrowd the pan or it'll cause the temperature of the oil to drop too far and the eggplant's going to end up greasy. Then you want to use tongs to quickly flip all of the eggplant so the skin side is facing down. This sets the pigments in the skin so they don't discolor. Now I'm going to let these fry for one minute. This flash frying process is the secret to making the eggplant soft and creamy while maintaining the vibrant purple hue of the skin. After the eggplant has been frying on the skin side for a few seconds, it's safe to stir them around a bit to make sure they cook through evenly. Okay, it's been about a minute, so let's get these out of the oil and onto our cooling rack to drain. I'm not using paper towels here because the eggplant has soaked up so much oil, it's better to let them drain this way first. 
Once we've fried and drained all of the eggplant, I'm gonna set down at least three layers of paper towels on a work surface and dump the eggplant onto them. Arrange these in a single layer, and then you wanna get another three to four sheets of paper towels and press them from the top to squeeze out as much oil from the eggplant as you can. Some of these are gonna still be really hot, so be careful not to press too hard or you might burn yourself. Once the paper towels are saturated, we're ready to move on to the stir fry. Before we put this together, I wanted to tell you a little more about the ingredients I used for this mapo eggplant recipe. Dashi is a soup stock that's used to give many Japanese dishes their umami. It's super easy to make and I'll link to my recipe in the video description, but to make it you'll need some good kombu or kelp and katsobushi, which are paper-thin flakes of smoked and fermented skipjack tuna. The other key ingredient in this dish is the rayu, or Japanese chili oil. This one's from Ishigaki Island in Okinawa, and it's not only spicy, it packs loads of flavor and umami thanks to a blend of local seasonings and spices. Some of these ingredients can be a little hard to find outside of Japan, but I've partnered up with Kokoro Care Packages to be able to offer you the same authentic ingredients that I use here in my Tokyo kitchen. This time I've created a holiday care package, which also includes my favorite golden sesame seeds, mochiko that you can use to make my Japanese sweets recipes, and a box of matcha cookies that are mind-blowingly good. It makes for the perfect gift for anyone who's into Japanese food, so hit the link in the description down below and use coupon code NORECIPES to get 10% off your first order. Mmm. It's so good. Okay, for our stir fry, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of oil to a hot frying pan over medium-high heat. Then I'm gonna add the ginger and garlic and stir fry these for about 30 seconds or until they're super fragrant. Next, I'm gonna add the scallion stems and continue to stir fry the mixture until the scallions become translucent. This'll take about a minute. Now I'm gonna go in with the ground pork and use the side of a spatula to crumble it up. The goal here is to get some good Maillard browning on the meat while rendering out as much excess fat from it as possible. This not only generates umami, it's also gonna help keep the dish from getting too greasy. After stir frying this for about three minutes, you should see a good amount of oil in the pan, and you wanna use a paper towel to soak up as much of it as you can. Now I'm gonna add the eggplant to the pan and toss them together with the pork. Then I'm gonna give the sauce a final stir to redistribute the starch and pour it into the pan. The sauce will thicken as it boils and you wanna cook everything together for a few minutes to allow all the flavors and textures to mingle. Once the sauce is nice and thick like this, I'm gonna pour in the rayu to finish this off. Then I'm just gonna give this a few tosses to combine and our Mabo eggplant is ready to serve. To serve this family style, I usually pour it into a shallow bowl like this, garnish it with some scallion greens, and our mabo nasu is ready to eat. All right, y'all ready to try this out? Itadakimasu. It smells so good, it's super fragrant. All right, I'm gonna get some eggplant and a bunch of meat here and some of that sauce. Mmm. <laughs> The eggplant is super creamy and juicy, and that savory meat sauce coats your mouth with tons of umami, and those spices and seasonings in the rayu add a ton of depth to this, as well as a good amount of heat. All right, I'm gonna go in for another bite. Mmm. You know what this needs? A bowl of rice. Well, I'm gonna go pour the rest of this over a bowl of rice and have mapo nasu donburi for lunch. But check out this miso glazed eggplant for another great way to use Japanese eggplants. And I'll catch you in the next one.